sin in body or in spirit, and join me in the call to worship that is printed in your bulletin. From the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 29. Give praise to the Lord, O heavenly hosts. Sing of God's glory and strength. We sing the glory of the name of the Lord. We have come to worship God in holy splendor. The voice of God is over the waters and echoes over the oceans and seas. The voice of the Lord is powerful and majestic. The voice of God breaks the bonds of oppression and shatters the chains of injustice. The Lord invites all to the dance of freedom and to sing the song of truth. May God give strength to all the people. May the Lord bless all nations with peace. Let us join in our worship with singing our opening hymn, which, which is number one in your hymnal, Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs> Forgive us when we fall short in declaring your glory 
or fail to love others as you have loved us, call us again to the ways of living that reflect the light of your love. Let us shine for the world that hungers for your truth and justice. Cleanse us and make us new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now make the confession of the church. Let us make the confessions of our own hearts in a time of silence. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God's mercy and love surround us always. We are embraced by a love that has no boundaries, and we are set free to carry that love into the world, because in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Heart of mine, you know me. 
The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here ends the reading. May God bless us with understanding. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So this is Trinity Sunday, which reminds us of the complexity and mystery of our God. One God, three persons. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, and yet one. I'm sure we've all heard many metaphors through the years. The Trinity is like the three loaves of a shamrock. Each one is distinct, but it is one leaf. The Trinity is like the three states of matter. H2O is solid ice when frozen, and liquid water at room temperature and steam past the boiling point, but one substance. The Trinity is like light. There is the source of the light, and the light itself that provides illumination, and the warmth when you stand in the light. The Trinity is the one who loves, and the one who is loved, and the love that they share between themselves. The more words we use to try to describe it, the less understandable it becomes, I think. The idea of God as one God with three persons is simply a mystery. We can never fully comprehend the depth and complexity of the nature of God. What we can understand is that God is all about relationship. <laughs> Trinity is about relationship. And from the very beginning, as God began creating, we hear that the Spirit was there, breathing over the waters. John's Gospel tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and in time the Word put on a suit of human flesh and came to live on the earth. God has always been in relationship with the Spirit and the Word from the very beginning. And God created us to be in relationship too. God made the first human being to be in relationship with God, but then God said, it's not good for this human to be alone. So then God created another human to be a companion. When Jesus started his ministry, he called out to some fishermen and to some others and said, Come and follow me. He wanted to be in relationship for that ministry. And when he later sent his disciples out to the countryside, he said to them, Do not take any extra clothes or money. Go out and meet people. Sit at their tables. Stay in their houses. Help the 
the ones who are in need. In other words, don't be so self-reliant. Go out and make relationships. When the Holy Spirit came in the Pentecost story, there were 120 believers gathered in one place. And when the noise of the wind and the flames got really loud, People from all over the world gathered to see what the commotion was about, and 3,000 of them became believers that day. See, God is always inviting us into new and more and deeper relationships. But we are not always so good at that. Too often we treat our relationships as transactional instead of transformational. We treat others as though they are just a means to an end. Like we would want to get close to those who can do something for us. That's a transactional relationship. The Reverend Amy Butler puts it this way. Once Jesus had gathered all his disciples, he went public with his message of hope. At a wedding. It was at the wedding in Cana that he turned water into the finest wine, impressing the guests and even his mother. And you know what? His popularity suddenly soared. Now this may not have been exactly what Jesus expected. He started out to share the transforming power of the gospel message and suddenly he was like the traveling sideshow in a circus. People flocked to him, desperate to be recipients of any miracle that he might perform. John's Gospel says, many believed in his name because they saw the signs he was doing, but Jesus would not entrust himself to them. Jesus was dubious about their belief. He knew they were following him because they wanted him to keep performing, to fix the things that had been unfixable, to keep them in an unlimited supply of bread and really good wine. So the tension began to grow between what Jesus was trying to communicate and what the people were understanding. Then we come to today's story. During the day, Jesus had been at the temple. He turned over the tables of the money changers and told them to stop treating the house of God like a marketplace. And then that night, the knock comes at Jesus' door. And we heard the story of Jesus' first encounter with Nicodemus. Now Nicodemus was a leader of the Pharisees, and since Jesus had just had a very public confrontation with the Pharisees in the temple that day, we can only assume that Nicodemus purposely waited to come under the cover of darkness to talk to Jesus. And then he gets to the question that's on his mind. He says, we know you are a teacher. We know you are from God because of all the miracles you are performing, but who are you really? And what do you mean to do with us? <clears throat> See, Nicodemus had been raised to believe that relationships are transactional. You do this for me, I will do that for you. He had been raised to believe that faith was transactional. God put down some rules, and if you follow the rules, you are in. And if you break the rules, you are out. But Jesus was talking about something bigger, deeper, more all-encompassing. Jesus was talking about relationships that are not transactional, but transformational. He was talking about setting aside our limited understanding of rules and boundaries and delineations and deals to talk about something much more radical. 
God's deep and all-encompassing love for the whole world, a radical love to which Jesus invites us and for which he died. That's what he says in that familiar verse from today's Gospel. For God so loved the world, the whole world, the cosmos, that God sent the Son into the world to invite us out of our deal-making and into transformational love. So Pastor Amy asks, what would it mean if we set aside the rules we have created, the ways in which we neatly judge ourselves and others as being in or out? What if we set that aside and instead took Jesus up on his invitation to believe? He says, the Son came into the world so that all who believe can have a transformed life. And we believe in the radical kind of love that God has for the whole cosmos, including us. Well, it's a little bit of a challenge, because the word believe doesn't mean quite what it did in that time. When we think of belief, we usually think of two things. First, we think we believe in some set of facts, something we can discuss and get our brains around, something where there is objective, repeatable proof, like I believe in the force of gravity, because every time I let something go, it drops. The second belief sometimes implies that there is an amount of uncertainty. So we want to believe in the facts that are provable, but if there is no proof, then we think, all right, we just have to suspend our logic and take this leap and just believe in something. But when Jesus and Nicodemus are having that deep middle of the night conversation, talking about belief, they meant something different. For them, the act of believing was directed toward a person, like, I believe in you. Believing was not an intellectual exercise, it was about relationship. And instead of understanding belief to be a suspension of logic, like we sometimes do, belief as Jesus meant it here, and in the practice of the early Christian church, belief meant to hold dear. Belief to them meant something like the English word, be loved, to give your heart to. So when they said, I believe in God, it meant, I give my heart to God. If they said, I believe in Jesus, it meant, I give my heart to Jesus. Marcus Borg wrote, the Christian life is not about pleasing God, the finger shaker and judge. It is not about believing now or being good now for the sake of heaven later. It is about entering a relationship in the present that begins to change everything starting now. See, God is always inviting us into relationship, inviting us to give our hearts to God and to give our hearts to one another. That's what church is all about giving us opportunities to build all kinds of relationships, helping us to live as if we know that God loves us, helping us to live as if we know that God loves the whole world, helping us to live knowing that God is inviting us to join in the difficult transformational work of healing this broken world, including our own broken hearts. For God so loved every part of creation 
that God sent Jesus into the world so that all who will give their hearts to the ways of God will have a transformed life in relationship with God and with everything that God loves, beginning now and lasting through all of eternity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of intercession is number two in your hymn book, Come Thou Almighty King. <laughs> Today is also the last uh, Sunday that we are taking our monthly mission collection for the Pentecost offering. You have uh, one of two inserts in your bulletin today, and 40% of this offering, which goes to support youth and young adults, uh, stays local, and our 40% will go to the South End Children's Cafe in Albany, where they provide uh, meals and homework assistance um, for kids who are part of that program. So, if this is a mission that touches your heart, the envelopes are on the tables. Uh, this is the last Sunday they're out, so please um, make that donation today. So, we have named those who are on our hearts and minds, uh, those who are beloved of folks in our community, and let's call them to mind now as we gather all of our prayers together. Holy God, we come to you with so many prayers and thanks. We thank you that Jesus came and showed us that your power and your peace and your love are real. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you for the warmth and kindness of our friendships. 
On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have given their lives in service of our country. Oh God, we are grateful that there have been so many who are willing to lay down their lives for their brothers and sisters in order to defend the freedom of all. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless all who are serving and bless their families. May they feel your presence. May you guide their ways. May you protect them from all harm. O oh God, on this weekend, we ask you to give us a renewed desire for peace. Give us a vision of your understanding that we may celebrate the diversity you created in this world. Help us to know that indeed all things will one day bow at your throne. And therefore we are brothers and sisters with all you have made. We pray, O oh God, for innocent victims of the violence of war, particularly for the people of Ukraine and Israel and Gaza. We pray, O oh God, for victims of violence of every kind, for those whose lives have been upended by terrible storms and tornadoes, for those who are not sure what the next chapter brings. We know, O oh God, that you are the sovereign of all, and we pray that your wisdom and compassion will go out to all who are in need. We pray particularly for the leaders of our nation and for nations around the world, that they may find your word and work for your purposes. We remember that Jesus told us to pray for our enemies. And so this day we do pray for all those who wish us harm, for all whom we have offended. Help us to see, O oh God, where we have done wrong, and give us courage to make changes and to mend the brokenness that we have created. We pray, O oh God, for all those who are suffering at this day, whether it is in body or mind or spirit, we pray that your compassion and your healing would be with them and that you will give us compassionate ears and minds and hearts that we may help any who are in need. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us to live more and more as disciples of Jesus Christ and hear us as we say together now the prayer that he taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us use the words of Scripture to be invited to our giving from the first book of Samuel. The Lord will humble the mighty and raise the poor from the dust. With awe and wonder, hope and joy, let us present our lives to the Lord. Giving is an act of faith. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us live as God hopes we will by loving the people God loves and sharing what we have with others. The offering plates are at the back of the aisles, or you may use the QR code in your bulletin, or you can go to our website, newscotlandpc.org, anytime to support God's ministry in this place. We give because we are so grateful for all the blessings we have in our lives. So let us stand and sing our praise with the words of the doxology.
who has created and cared for every part of our lives and for everything and all of creation. Receive what we give and bless all of our gifts and call us to even greater things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 634 in your hymn book, To God Be the Glory. Amen. Amen. 